Have you wondered about GMOs? Do you know what it means? Do you know what it stands for? Do you know if it matters or not? Hi, I'm Annette Reeder, the Biblical Nutritionist, and today on our grocery discovery, I'm here in my kitchen making my grocery list, getting ready to hit the store, and to share with you what GMOs to watch out for in the grocery store and how to identify a GMO on the products. So I just wanted to start here in my kitchen at my desk while I'm making up my grocery list and share these truths about GMO. So there's a lot we need to understand about GMO before we even get to the grocery store. And what you need to understand, you know, we've been, um, not we meaning me, but you know, science and you know, agriculturalists and even just regular gardeners have been hybridizing plants from the beginning of time technically from the beginning of time when God created. And so what it, that is, is you're taking a natural form of merging of two plants to create a better plant. There is nothing wrong with that at all. We're taking two things that God has designed, we're merging them together, and we're creating a better, a better food, a better plant, more beautiful flowers. I mean, just for many different reasons, it, we can do hybridization. And that is technically natural. We're taking two of the same species. Now, genetically modified organisms was what GMO stands for. It does not stand for God made organic, although that would really be really cool if it did stand for that. But genetically modified organisms is where we go into the laboratory and we pull out different genetic traits out of one species and insert it into another species. An example of this is when you combine the mosquito gene with the salmon, the fish salmon, so that salmon can now live in a pond. They were never created to live in a pond. They don't have the same nutritional value to us when we eat salmon when they're raised in a stinking pond. But mosquitoes love it. So that's when we're taking two different species that would, be, uh, that would never merge naturally under God's design and we're, we're merging them under science in a laboratory and you know we're starting to see the effects we're starting to see the health deficits that we are getting because of this it's disrupting the microbiome and the microbiome i teach about all the time so i'm not going to cover that here today but be sure and catch my other videos and hey while we're talking about it go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the bell next to it so you can get notified every time we are making these videos to help you understand how much god loves you and so that i can help serve you god's recipe for excellent health and I am Annette Reader, The Biblical Nutritionist. And if you want to engage in some conversation, hit us over on Facebook at The Biblical Nutritionist. And if you want to catch our free resources, which includes the new book, Seven Steps to Biblical Health and Three Lies That Prevent It, yeah, you might want to check out that free resource at thebiblicalnutritionist.com. Okay, so let's get back to what we're talking about. I really want you to understand what GMOs are, and then we're going to head straight to the grocery store, and I'm going to identify them for you. Okay, so de people who have digestive issues, allergies, autoimmune systems, we're realizing now that this is being attributed to the GMOs. But the other side of that, the flip side of that, is people who are having digestive issues, um, allergies, autoimmune issues, are actually more susceptible to GMO foods causing havoc in their digestive tract. And just realize, you know, most of your immune system and most of your emotions stem from your digestive tract. So if your gut's not happy, you aren't happy. So forget that saying, if mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. It's if your gut's not happy, you're not happy. And so GMOs alter that microbiome. They take it out of balance from the way God designed it. When, we, when our microbiome is perfectly balanced, you have energy, you have mental clarity, you have um, happy, <laughs> you are just happy. And it's because things are in balance. But when we eat foods that have been altered in a laboratory, we pay the price. And you know, there was even a $2 billion lawsuit that was, set, that was um, awarded this past fall because of, my, it wasn't so much because of the cancer that this couple had, had acquired, but it was because of Monsanto, who is the company that created the GMOs, created the glyphosate, and I've got a video about glyphosate too to help you understand that, so check that out. But it was because Monsanto manipulated its own research and it colluded with the regulators and it intimidated the scientists. That's where it comes down to, hey, we've got a problem. So what I want you to do is always stick to the three principles. Number one, eat the foods that God called food for you. Number two, eat it before it's been altered beyond its nutritional value. 
And number three, don't let any food become an addiction. All right, we're gonna head to the grocery store and I'm gonna show you how to shop for recognizing what's a GMO and what's not. We'll see you in the grocery store. So here we are at the grocery store and I just want to continue talking about GMOs. But first of all, I wanna show you a card. This is a card that we send out to everyone who makes purchases on our website. This is our Know Your GMO and it talks about the different foods that are a GMO and mostly we're concerned about corn, soybeans, canola, cottonseed, sugar beets, Hawaiian papaya, and sometimes there's zucchini and yellow squash. So these are the foods we're looking for. On the back of this card, you'll see we have just an encyclopedia of different words that you can look for on a package to know if it is a GMO. But basically the simple answer is just avoid these foods here that we're talking about on the front and then you'll always know that you're avoiding GMOs. And so what I really want to show with you today is let's look in the produce. So we've got lots of different foods here in the produce, but as long as we're avoiding corn, then that is the main food in here except for beets, papaya, and zucchini and squash. So those are the foods we definitely need to buy organic. Now we're not really concerned right now about glyphosate because glyphosate we'll talk about in a different video which I will link down below. But in the produce, you're fairly safe about GMOs as long as you avoid corn and soybeans and those foods that we just mentioned. All right, so let's head on to another area of the grocery store and see where we can learn how to shop non-GMO. But of course, anytime you're shopping here in the produce section, and you're getting some of these foods, you're always going to be needing to think about the other factor, which we've talked about in other videos, which is the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen, which we have here in these cards. These cards are so convenient. They just fold up, fit into your wallet, and, and of course, on the back, I have fiber facts, and you know how I am about fiber. You've got to have good fiber, not just fiber like eating a box, but like really good fiber in your diet. So the produce section is just, um, we're, as far as the clean 15, you, that's on another video. So just talking about, just talking about GMOs, your main thing you want to watch for is avoiding corn and soybeans. But there wasn't going to be any options for us to buy because of everything having different types of corn ingredients. Mostly because these breads are all dipped or slathered or covered with other ingredients that are including corn in, this, in the ingredients. But I did notice right up there at the very top, there's two breads and it's called Love Sprout Live. And if you look on the label here, I put one in my cart, right, the, right there we have the non-GMO project verified. So this would be a bread that you could use, it's cinnamon bread kissed with raisins. <laughs> They're obviously very good with marketing. And so this would be a good option for you if you wanna get some bread. And as I've taught you before, when it comes to bread, if it's not in the freezer section or you're making it yourself, then it's not a, a healthy grain bread. So we've got sprouted whole wheat, we've got raisins, we've got, we've got honey. So we've got a lot of good ingredients in here. So this is definitely a good option. I just kind of stumbled upon this today for our GMO video. All right, let's go to the next section. The breakfast section of the grocery store. You see we have waffles, pancakes, French toast, 90% of these are going to have GMO ingredients, and I wanted to point that out to you as to what that might look like. So here we have some buttermilk waffles, I'll flip it over, and right away you can see we have soy as an ingredient. I did find this package here, it is gluten free, which obviously should mean definitely no GMOs. So here we are right there, we're, we're package certified for no GMOs, and so this is made with brown rice, and definitely this would be a good option if you prefer this flavor. So there are options here in the fast breakfast aisle and stuff that you may enjoy. I noticed here in this already prepared meat section, if you need a quick lunch for your kids or for yourself, we've got some grilled and ready chicken strips, things like that. But what I did notice, they do have some Simply Smart Organics, chicken breast tenders, gluten-free, and there you can see right there on the front of the package, non-GMO ingredients, and it is certified organic. To be certified organic means it cannot have any uh, GMO ingredients to be certified organic. So there you go, that is an option here in the store. And you may wonder, well, what are the GMO ingredients? That meant it could not have, the chicken could not have been raised with GMO feed, nor can the coating on the chicken have any GMO ingredients. Meals for dieting, we got Lean Cuisine, we've got Smart Ones. There was a day when these were the most popular foods out there. Now everybody buys their dieting meals online through different sources, but yeah, these are still very popular. But what I want you to realize is almost all of them, I've looked through quite a few, I'll show you a label right here, are going to contain some type of 
corn, and most importantly, they're going to contain soy. Soy is used as a filler in a lot of these ingredients because it's cheap. It, it makes it so they don't have to put quite as much food in there, and you can still get a filling sense when you eat it. So all of these are going to have soy as one of their ingredients, and it's just, it's like a meal stretcher saves the companies a lot of money when they add soy fillers to their meals. So anytime you're going to buy a pre-made meal, you're going to probably be eating a lot of soy. So sorry to disappoint you, but right now I'm at this store at Walmart, I'm not finding any organic options or any non-GMO options. So um, just keep looking. I know they're out there and you want to make good choices. All right, here we are in the condiment section and this is where it really gets tricky as far as GMOs. Most of these are going to have a corn or a soybean base to it. It's what adds flavor. You can see we do have a few good options here, although the price is pretty steep for some avocado oil. It does have the non-GMO verified. So what we want to do is we want to just kind of look at the food and we want to see does it even have a corn so here right away we have a soybean oil. So this would be a definite no. I know it's a very popular food in Virginia, D Duke's is, but if we look at others, if you look at this mayo Q sauce, let's see what their top ingredients are. Number one, we have soybean oil. So this would be a definite no. Okay, here we have some Hellman's olive oil mayonnaise. Number one ingredient, soybean oil. All right, so Anytime you have soybean oil as the very first ingredient, that is a definite no. That's not even a, well, maybe just a little bit. No, that is a definite no. So this is where it gets, where you either have to start making your own or you spend the money and buy organic, which is really crazy because you think you're buying a good brand when you buy an olive oil. And then when you turn it over, sure enough, the first ingredient is soybean oil. So soybeans are cheap, olives are not and that's why soybeans are used for fillers in almost every ingredient. And here's a section of the grocery store you can actually breathe a little bit. In the tomato sauce section, you don't normally have soy and corn identified on the labels of your pasta sauces. And so we have a couple here. We have, this one is actually an interesting one. We have farmer's market protein from vegetables, chickpea and kale, but it does say non-GMO right there. So that way we know right away, this is a non-GMO. That would probably be a really good uh, spaghetti sauce. I'm gonna try that. And then we have other varieties here. We've got the Pioneer Woman becoming very popular for many reasons because of her cooking show. We turn it over and we look at her ingredients and it's pretty much tomato based. This is. This one does include some Italian sausage, so you've got some pork and just different ingredients there with the seasonings. So you don't know how the pork were fed. It's not claiming to be non-GMO, so we can just assume the pork might have been fed a GMO feed. But other than that, we're just trying, we're really just guessing on that one, so it could be a good option. And then again, we're not really sure. So here I found just now looking up on top, here's a sauce right here called Ragu Simply. And right there it's saying non-GMO verified. So this would also be another good option. And it well, that didn't go well. I wasn't expecting to get kicked out of Walmart. Okay, well, so I'm gonna finish this video here in my house. I have a few foods here that I pulled out of my pantry that I can still teach you about what to look for in GMO foods. I mean, I only made it through the freezer section, my goodness. Okay, so here we have a really good rice blend. Rice, there is no GMO in rice. So it, it doesn't, it, even though it says, it has the verification on there that it's non-GMO verified, there is no GMO in rice as far as the wild rice. So this is kind of just a, just to help you feel good that, hey, it's got the seal. And you know what, I'm all for giving me a good feeling when I buy a food because it's hard to keep up with what's happening to our food. So there could be GMOs happening before we're even told about it. So the fact that it is GMO, non-GMO verified, I'm happy with that. Whether I, right now I know it's not a GMO food, so it's just like, okay, well, whatever for selling purposes, but I don't care. I like knowing that it's a non-GMO food and it's verified. Okay, so here's another one. I got some cashew butter. I was using this on our Daniel Fast snacks video, so you might want to check that video out. So this just has cashews and some sunflower oil. Both are a non-GMO food. They're not going to have any GMO contamination. And so it does not have the, the non-GMO verification seal on it, but I already know those foods are not an issue, so this is quite okay. And 
I grabbed some of my cocoa nibs and they have the certification down here at the bottom. You can kind of see that there. So, but cocoa beans in general are not a GMO food. But once again, we get a little bit extra verification. Hey, at least it's verified. And so the other thing is, even though cocoa beans are not a GMO crop, they can still add ingredients. They could add different dustings and things like that in the processing. So that means it verified that there is no GMO dusting in the process. All right, so cereal. Now this was the aisle I was gonna spend a lot of time in because GMOs are just all over the cereal aisle. In fact, I really hope you don't buy store-bought cereals. And so here I have some Smart Brand um, and it has the verification there, you can see that. So in the cereal aisle, these two stickers are a must because there is so much that has been done in the cereal aisle to just really destroy the quality of the food, the nutritional value of the food, and what could happen to you from eating this day after day after day. All right, so the last thing I wanna share with you is some pastas I have. Yeah, I pulled this out of my pantry. It's not organic lasagna. And so, but looking in the ingredients, and I actually just did a double check on all the ingredients. There's no GMO ingredients in this. Now, glyphosate is another issue, so check that video out, like I've already said, to understand what, what's going on with glyphosate. So, but instead, we also have here some organic spaghetti, which has both the verifications there, non-GMO and organic. All right, so let's just recap this. Yes, I just, I'm probably not gonna do any more videos in Walmart because I don't like getting in trouble. But basically, when it comes to GMO, we want to realize the three principles, which I've already taught you, you know, eat the foods that God called food as close to the way he designed it. And our body will just be, have this amazing energy, amazing clarity. We will be able to do more things than we ever imagined when we eat organic and more so than ever before organic is a must. Now, let me just tell you something very important. Organic doesn't mean it's, it's 100% non-GMO. I'm sorry to tell you, it just means that it doesn't hit the parameters to be labeled a GMO. So it still has small percentages of GMO. It's almost impossible not to eat a GMO ingredient in your lifetime because it is so scattered over everything we eat. But you lessen your chances of having issues with it if you eat organic. So I hope you understand me with this. Man has totally messed up our food. So we have to do everything possible to control what we can, grow what we can, can uh, work with different farmers. We've got to be in control of our food. So organic is best. It's not perfect unless you are in control of the organic. Anyway, this has been a very interesting video and I'm glad you stuck with me on it because this is very important for us to understand and to recognize, wow, I need to control my health. And you do that by controlling your food first and foremost. Annette Reader, the Biblical Nutritionist, I can't wait to read your comments about this video, what you thought about it, you know, what you liked about it, what would you like me to teach you, and don't forget, hit that subscribe and the bell next to it, and also don't forget, we have our seven steps to biblical health and the three lies that prevent it, free download, totally free with lots of freebies included in it. I really don't want you to miss that, so check it out at thebiblicalnutritionist.com.